Now, as in this moment, can we just honor those that have fallen on this Memorial Day with the clapping of our hands? Let's honor them. And while you're clapping, and while you're clapping, can we honor our pastor, Dr. Tim Maynard, in his presence? And if none of you, if, if nobody else clap, I'm going to honor my wife in her presence. And all of my Dream Church family, you may be seated. Uh, turn your Bibles with me. I'm just so delighted to be here, but turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans, uh, chapter number six, verses five through 14. Uh, Romans six, verses five through 14. And today's focus, uh, uh, being that it's a, uh, uh, a holiday weekend, and I, I, I pretty much at, at Dream Church, on Dream Church, we have like this new cool church that don't meet every fifth Sunday. So our team is like super excited, like this is a rest and recharge Sunday. And I was like, well, this is a perfect opportunity to come hang out with my Fruit Cold family this morning. So I'm excited about that. But while you're getting the scriptures, it should be on the screen. Uh, Romans chapter number six, verses five through 14, the ESV uh, English Standard Version reads, verse number five, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. Verse 14 says, for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. Can we pray? Father God, thank you for another opportunity that you have allowed us to gather today. We remember those who have sacrificed their lives, but we remember Jesus on how he was resurrected. Thank you for your mercy and your grace that has kept us until this moment that we get to hear your words of life through scripture, because we know that scripture is king. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Can everybody say amen? Amen. 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 The great pastor O.P. Kretzman said this, if we are to survive the atomic age, we must have something to live by, to live on, and to live for. We must stand aside from the world's conspiracy of fear and hate and grasp once more to the great monosyllables of life, faith, hope, and love. Men must live by these if they live at all under the crushing weight of history. In the text today, Paul teaches and gives us something to live by, to live on, and to 
live for. To the contrary, some would say there are many things to live by, many things to live on, and many things to live for. But today, I want you to allow the text to impress upon your hearts during this Memorial Day about God's righteousness and his grace, allowing us to live to finding how we live, why we should live, ultimately moving us to this place of faith or living by faith according to his gospel. It is our faith in Jesus Christ alone. And because of your faith in Christ alone, you can live a new life. Before I get into the text, how many of y'all would just give me 20 minutes? Raise your hand. 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20, 40, 60. Oh, we're going to be here all. No, I'm just kidding. Verse number five says, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Before I get to point number one today, I want the focus to be that you're free, you're alive, and you're saved. Repeat after me. I'm free, free. I'm alive, alive, and I'm saved. We got a good audience. Now I'm going to finish fast. Point number one, if you're taking notes, point number one today is because of our unity with Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin. Because of our unity with Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin. For if we have become one with him, permanently united in the likeness of his death, we will also certainly be one with him and share fully in the likeness of his resurrection. We know that our old self, our human nature, without the Holy Spirit was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. The power of sin has been broken in those that believe. The power of sin has been broken in you who believe. The commentator states that Paul does not argue that Christians do not sin at all. It is a view called sinless perfection. Instead, the tyranny or the, the domination and the rule of sin have been defeated for them. This means that the normal pattern of life for Christians should be progressive growth and sanctification, resulting in an ever greater maturity and conformity to God's moral law in your thoughts and in your actions. You should be consistently as believers and those that are listening that call themselves Christians, you should be consistently maturing and conforming in your thoughts and your actions as a Christian. The question I want to pose to you guys this morning is what did Christ nail to the cross for you? What did Christ nail to the cross for you, that's something to think about. What sin did you battle? What, what sin are you battling? What is it that Christ has nailed to the cross for you? Paul talks to the church of Galatians, Galatians 2 and 20, and he says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Christ sacrificed his life for you. And it was on that 
old bloody cross that he nailed your sin to it so that you can live a new life in him and Christ. Verse number seven says, for one who has died has been set free from sin. I had you exclaim and proclaim that you're free. And this is how you're free. Verse seven says, for one who has died has been set free from sin. Leading us to point number two is that sin does not have power over dead people. Sin does not have power over dead people people. Could it be any clearer? I ask this question. Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to the sin miserable life, no longer captive to sin's demands. I told you that I wanted you to, and I pray that I want you to, imp- I want you this word to impress upon your heart during this day of remembering that you're no longer captive to sin's demands. For the person who has died with Christ, the scripture calls our attention to, has been freed from the power of sin, you have been set free. Somebody say, I'm free. I'm free. You can be set free to that person that may be sitting here, that person that may be watching, that person that may be listening on the radio. You can be set free. It's so imperative to understand that you can be set free from those people, those places, and those things that plague you. It calls my attention to my past, that I had to be set free from some people, some places, and some things. Am I the only one in this room that had to be set free from some people, some places, and some things? Absolutely not. Verse 8 calls our attention that now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Our next point is, you're dead to sin and alive to God. You're dead to sin and alive to God. I said to God when I was praying, what should I preach? He said, well, preach Romans. And I said, why? It's so hard. I'm not going to encourage people. He said, yes, you are. You're going to encourage them to live a righteous life. A sin, free life. A life of freedom. What a perfect message for today. You can live free. Wait a minute, I'm free? Yes, uh, you're free. You're free to live in Christ alone. You are alive in the same way this text and this point calls us to that you must think of yourselves as dead to the power of sin. But Christ Jesus has given you life and you life to live for God. He has given you life and a life to live for God. Jesus died. Listen to this, y'all. Jesus died because he took sin upon himself. But his resurrection demonstrates that he has defeated both sin and death. 
Dead to sin means dead to the pervasive love for the ruling power of sin. Christians must realize the mastery of sin has been broken in their lives. Do you realize it? Do you realize that you don't have to live in sin? Do you realize, it's, it's a wait a minute, you, you're preaching a three-letter cuss word. No, I'm preaching a three-letter life word. Do you realize you don't have to live in sin? Colossians 3 and 3 says, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You are no longer exposed to sin, but you are hidden with Christ, and you are hidden in Christ. I'm so glad that you don't know the real me. I'm so glad that I don't know you. Because if, if I knew you, I would know all of your frailties. I would know all of the brokenness that you deal with. I would know all of your weaknesses. I would know about all of the poor decisions you've made in your wonderful lives. I will know all of the things that are hidden in Christ. But that's for Christ to know, not me. Because you have been free from sin. Because you are alive and you are free. It's amazing how Christ protects us and hides us from all of those things. Because honestly, if we knew all those things about each other that's traveling through our hearts and our minds, some of y'all would slide over from the person you're sitting next to, or maybe even the person you sleep next to. Wait a minute. Are you serious? Yes, I am very serious. Because Christ has hidden all of those things, those little idiosyncrasies that you have, those little secrets, those little minions that run around your mind and your heart. He has hidden them and nailed them to the cross. And that's a good place to celebrate the life of Jesus. Let not sin, verse 12 says, therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members as, at, to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you. Sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law but under grace. A last point today. There is freedom in God's grace. There is freedom in God's grace. Do not let sin Control the way you live, ladies and gentlemen. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have a new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. Praise God. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, 
You live under the freedom of God's grace. So as we, we look and, and we, we understand that there will be tensions in our life, there will be this, this tension that constantly battles with our, 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 between flesh and between spirit, the tensions that surfaces here in the text between what God has already accomplished and the responsibility of his people to obey. Can I ask you a question? Are you willing to obey God in the fullness of his power, his might? Are you willing to obey? Are you willing to listen to God? It was was the children of Israel who went around the wilderness and, and traveled around the wilderness for years because of what? Disobedience. How many of us may be going in circles in our life because we're not willing to obey God? Are you willing to be obedient to God? You will still be tempted. Can I tell you a secret? You're going to still get tempted. You're going to get tempted by the desires to sin, but you do not have to let those desires gain your control. Each day you must give yourself afresh to God. As the psalmist calls our attention to, early will I seek him. Lord, I'll meditate on thy law day and night. Sin will have no dominion over you. This is not a commandment. It is a promise. It is a promise that sin will not triumph in the lives of those who believe. Because they live in the new era of fulfillment. They are no longer, Christians are no longer under the old era of redemptive history. That is, they are no longer under the law where the Mosaic law uh, was abiding in this old sin ruled uh, over God's people. By contrast, I want you guys to understand this and leave you with this, that under grace, means living under the new covenant in Christ in an era characterized by his grace. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God for his grace. So now if I was on the east side, I would tell you to touch your neighbor, but I'm going to tell you to look at your neighbor and say, thank God for his grace. This is what I understand. This means that sin does not have a vote in your way of living. Sin should not conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands with sin. You know how we do. We want to skip the line. We want to have a little bit of road rage. You might even want to point a finger at somebody. None of y'all do that. I'm talking over here. This is the the good side. (laughs) All of of y'all is just saved all day on this side. Yeah, I'm saying over here. I don't know about them. It's, it's those moments that they do not run those errands, that sin should not rule you. And I'm almost finished. Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time. I want you to remember this, that you have been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin cannot tell you how to live You're not living under the old tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of God. 
when I was studying this, it was a song that came to mind. It was an old hymn. I said, okay, God, I'm free. I'm alive. And I'm saved. Free, alive, and saved. I don't know if you guys remember this. I'm, you know, I'm used to preaching to millennials who may not know hymns, but I'm sure there's a few of you guys in here who know this hymn. No? The words of the song is, I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. Saved by his power divine, saved to a new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, I'm saved and saved. And if you're saved in this building today, I want you to celebrate Jesus with the clapping of your hands. Can I pray for you as you stand and rest on your feet? I'm free. I'm alive. I'm saved. I'm free. I'm alive. And I'm saved. After I finish praying, we want to respond to the gospel. There will be those leadership will be up front to pray with you. If you're saying to yourself, what is this guy talking about? I'm free. Yep, you're free from sin once you believe and as you accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. No longer do you have to be bound by the tyranny and the dominion of old laws, but you can live in God's grace, His perfect will. So I'm talking to the heart, to the person who will say to themselves today, I want to be saved, and this is your opportunity to respond to the gospel. So, Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to spend this moment with you, understanding what the Scripture calls us to, that we are free from sin today. Thank you for sacrificing your son Jesus Christ on the cross for the remission of our sins. Thank you, God, for freeing us from lifestyles of sin. God, thank you for reaching in and digging into our hearts this morning. Encouraging our hearts. Chastising us. Correcting us. Thank you, God, for your grace that saves us. Thank you, God, for this moment that you have called us to be more aware of our freedom. In Jesus' name we pray that, it, that the church say amen.